Got it. <laughs> Happy New Year. Welcome to Binary Jazz. Happy New Year. Uh, this is a podcast about things with some people uh, on the podcast with me. My name is Chris. I'm here with Gary and Allison, and that's just how we're going to roll. Off to a great start, 2023. Can I tell you a silly thing I did? Sure. We'll, we'll start. We'll, we'll, we'll continue with a great start. So uh, for Christmas, um, Ty got uh, some egg circles, egg molds. I don't know what they are. Like the little metal thing you put in your pan, you crack uh-huh. your egg into it, keeps it in a okay. nice circle. Two days ago, I, or three days ago, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Time mm-hmm. is meaningless. I uh, put it in there and I, I had two in, I had eggs in them. And uh, very dramatically, I grabbed the handles and yanked up on them. But I didn't spray enough stuff around the ring, so I flunked these things right out of the pan like a weird superhero. <laughs> <laughs> and breakfast was ruined. <laughs> I mean, I ate one of them. The other one was the other one was five seconds doesn't really apply in that case. It's just gross. <laughs> That's very much something I would do. Um <laughs> And Listen just try to just trying to add flourish to a day to day activity and just totally <laughs> botching yeah, it. Up. Yeah, yeah, that feels <laughs> feels pretty legit. Yeah, it was good. I'm, I I was uh, had it been like February, I would have not laughed. I would have been like, of course, everything's meaningless and dark, even eggs. And the, you know, but yeah, January and, and we we not apparently have sun. You can't see it, but well, yeah, you, you can see it. We have sun right now, which is fucking awesome. I hear good things about the sun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. a fan. I'm a We're fan. in the midst of like two weeks of just gray and rain, so I'm like, yeah, oh I, yeah, I remember this now. <laughs> I was I was in I was in California, and we had like maybe two days, well, maybe a day and a half when it wasn't just pouring while mm. we were there. That was like. It was actually mm-hmm. it was actually like enough that um uh we we were we went to the Hiller Aerospace Museum. Uh go on. Yeah, you would have Gary's you attention. <laughs> you would have liked it, Gary. Yeah, I was I was thinking about you uh, as we were there. Um Hiller was some weird dude that was like a child prodigy that then started an aerospace company and like made like a hover pad thing hmm. for the navy yeah uh it's pretty cool uh they ha- they had the hover pad that he made uh wow it's, it's like it's like basically like a giant fan that you stand on top of and it sort of like floats you up in the air um anyway he did lots of other things too but but he created like this hiller uh air part company that that then was successful uh and now there's a museum there um but anyway um uh on the way there on on the freeway on highway 101 uh which is a really flat freeway like it's basically like i mean california is pretty flat uh and it's sea level but like highway 101 as opposed to like other freeways it's particularly flat right mm. um and uh on the way there there is like parts of the freeway that were that were flooded um and my dad said that that was the worst that he'd ever seen and and i think i probably agree i don't know that i've seen uh things be be quite as as wet as as they were so, yeah rain yeah, they had a name for it because my brother was talking about how i mean like not atmospheric river but something else um there's all these new weather terms i've learned mm-hmm. since moving to the west coast and i'm like things i'm just like i didn't know that was the thing that existed and they're just like careful that's the biggest water spout we've seen and i'm like that's not a what <laughs> oh water spouts yeah Yeah, water spout it's not a real weather term (laughs) uh and then we were lucky enough to catch it uh on the way out too um so then it it, as we were leaving it was just raining all day and then the rain turned to snow and then the snow got thicker and then we had to put chains on the car and then suddenly and then eventually we were in reno (laughs) chains on the car yeah i have a memory drive 30 miles an hour for for like 60 miles wow I have a memory as a youth of like at some point we were on a family trip and my dad had to stop and we had to put chains on the car and I remember me and my brother being like we learned so many new words and my mom's like oh no <laughs> <laughs> yes that's that amazing is, that's accurate that's accurate <laughs> what um for someone who has resided in the south all their life how much 
like snow do you or accumulation do you need before you consider putting chains on or is it more of a traction thing or it's a traction thing and it's really like uh and we might have been able to get by without putting them on but we still would have had to go super slow um f my gauge is i mean for me what what the determining factor was in this trip specifically was when i stopped being able to see the lines in the road mm -hmm. and when we're just following like the tire tracks um instead uh and when the tire tracks no longer you, when you can no longer see like the road through the tire tracks they're just tire tracks in snow that's probably okay. a pretty good time okay and you put it on all four tires or just the tires no, that are drive two, tires just the drive tires yeah okay. but for all wheel drive it kind of doesn't matter um so so for all wheel drive which we had we just put them on the front oh interesting well, that's better than I, I mean, I guess that's better than I thought. It's 50% less chains than I expected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that means it's 200% easier. <laughs> exactly. Statistically, yeah. this is a piece of cake. <laughs> yeah. It's but perfect it's, weather it's... to put on snow tires. <laughs> yeah. I can't. <laughs> Why don't you put them on when it's sunny out? <laughs> but there are. It's easier. There, there are speed limit. Like when you're wearing chains, you can't go faster than like 30 miles an hour. Otherwise, you might pop the chains off. So like, that makes sense. Yeah. So once you have the chains on, it's like, okay, I'm committing to going really fucking slow for as long as I need to. And we do actually. You, we do actually. You use the cruise control at that point? Or no, you don't want to? I didn't. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I could have. I'm maybe. Yeah. I don't know. What What do they sound like? But you don't hear like the rattling, like they're tight enough that there's no rattle between the links. Yeah, there's no rattle. Hmm. It's not really like our chains aren't really chains in the sense of like links of chain that are connected. I mean, like big trucks still use chains that are that kind. It's mostly like these uh, tension bands that are connected with like metal links and stuff, and and then there's like. Um, this set of chains had has like sort of a rubber ring that you hook on this sort of inner what this inner cable to, okay. to keep them like affixed to the to the tire so they don't pop off gotcha gotcha this is why i come this is to teaching, learn things. teaching gary about chains yeah um so so we talked in the off season so first episode of oh off season i feel like a sports star now yeah. i have an off season <laughs> Uh, first episode of whatever season <laughs> this is, we'll probably figure out after the show's over. Uh, Seven. Five, six, I don't know. Uh, wait, I have it right here, probably. Um, anyway, we talked in, no, I don't, because I need to log in. Uh, we talked in the off season about, uh, changing the format a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. wherein, uh, instead of Allison always bringing topics, uh, we could all do our, our manly duty and sometimes also bring topics. <laughs> Um, and I was voluntold to, to come up with the first one <laughs> and, and in... I knew you had the week off. So I thought you had something to do. I know. And exactly. that's the other thing. I didn't know you had this week off. I was like, we wouldn't even remember. Recording. Yeah. I knew it. I knew I'm it. just, I'm back at work. So I'm kind of yeah. like, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got back in town on Tuesday. Um, so I just took the whole week. Um, yeah. Um, anywho. Uh, in, in traditional binary jazz fashion, I asked a robot to do my job for me. Ooh. Uh, and, um, I, I should have seen you, this coming actually. What, how, let, how did I not see this coming? Let me tell you that the results were not satisfactory. <laughs> Mm. The robot doesn't really get our vibe. <laughs> I mean, and that's why I'm not never worried when people are like, Some, a robot's going to take your job. I'm like, yeah. a robot can't. A robot doesn't even a robot can't do this. I can't replicate this. <laughs> <laughs> it's madness. So, so what I did was I fed uh, uh, Chat GPT uh, the description of our show. Can I can I pause yeah. real quick on Chat GPT and admit sure. something? Yeah, I've been paying attention to other people using it. Uh -huh. Do you have to like validate your account with like a phone number or something to actually use ChatGPT to log in, or is there an anonymous I, way to fiddle with it? I just uh, well, there's not an anonymous way of fiddling with it. Um, I just use my then Google I don't account. care. I I just use my Google account. Yeah, so I, I log in with Google. So okay. I fed it. I fed it. Didn't realize my, you could do that. Yeah, but... yeah. 
Uh, I fed it the description of our show from our website. I just copy and pasted, like, we have a little blurb at the top of the uh, page, mm -hmm. and then we have an about section. I, I fed it those things. And then uh, I said, past epi examples of episodes have been, and I listed the last five episode titles. And then I asked it to list five topics that could be on binary jazz. Okay. okay. Uh, four of these are things that would never be topics on binary jazz. One of them, maybe. Okay. okay. So first it came up with escalators. Well, all right. I know what those are. Right. Confident. Here's the move. All right. <laughs> Cryptography. Yep. I'm okay. with you. Geocaching. E yeah, I can see why you weren't thrilled. Keep going. <laughs> Astrology. Yeah. <laughs> and, and geocaching. And geodc. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, there we get one. There we get one. It's like, okay, that might work. That, that, I don't hmm. know what that is. Okay. So then I say, assuming Gary and Chris already know about escalators, cryptography, geocaching, and astrology, list five more topics that might stump the hosts of binary jazz. So then it came up with Shit. quantum Listen. computing. <laughs> okay. And then the rest of these, it put in parentheses descriptions of what the things were, which is interesting because it didn't do that with quantum computing, and I didn't ask it to do that. So I just decided to start doing something different, which is, you know, a fun robot thing. Uh, mycology. Yep. Okay. okay. Great. And it says the study of fungi. Cartography. I would have said mushrooms, but okay. Uh, I'm not the, a study, robot. the study and practice of making maps. We knew that. Yep. Paleontology. Yep. The study Got of it. ancient life and, life and fossils. And uh -huh. chromat chromatography, which is interesting, and I will not say what, what it tells me in parentheses. Uh, I don't really want to talk about chromatography today, but I do want to talk about this process. <laughs> <laughs> but I will still leave chromatography open-ended, and maybe we can return to it later. Yeah, that's fine. So, that, so then I said, okay, so... The show notes for an episode titled Fata Morgana are as follows. And I copied the, the ep show notes for our last episode, or the last one before the last one. And then I said, write the show notes for an episode on chromatography. Oh. Uh, and this, okay, so this is probably going to explain the thing. Uh, this is very much not our vibe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is where I started thinking, like, perhaps the robot doesn't get the fact that we don't actually talk about the topic very much, <laughs> and we just make shit up. It says, welcome to another episode of Binary Jazz. In this so episode, far, it's killing it. Yeah, exactly. That, that, yeah. In this episode, we delve into the world of chromatography. Uh, mm -hmm. It describes what chromatography is. It says, we'll discuss the different types of chromatography, how they work, and their various applications in fields such as chemistry, biology, and environmental science. As always, we'll be also be sharing some of our own personal experiences and tangents, so be prepared for some unexpected turns in the conversation. Tune in and learn more about chromatography and join us on our journey of scientific discovery. And that is really at our core what this show is about. There's like 0% chance discovery. I would show up for a recording if that's what I was expecting us to talk about and do. But twists and turns in the narrative. How can you not? <laughs> twists and turns are our own personal tangents. Um, okay. Put a lot so of those, I guess. So then, so then I said, <laughs> all right, robot. <laughs> Let's. We need to get a little bit closer to the cut. A little bit co closer. So rewrite the show notes based on the assumption that no one on the show actually knows anything about chromatography. <laughs> okay. And so it says instead, "Welcome to another thrilling episode of Binary Jazz." In this episode, we attempt to navigate the mysterious world of chromatography, a topic that is completely new to us. Join us as we try our best to understand and discuss this complex scientific method, despite our complete ignorance on the subject. Expect some <laughs> hilarious misunderstandings and plenty of guesswork as we try to make sense of it all. Who knows where this conversation will take us? Our complete ignorance. <laughs> We know nothing. <laughs> I did say that no one on the yeah. show actually knows anything about chromatography, so it's not inaccurate. God. So then I said, okay, add a note to say that the show notes may have been written by an AI bot. <laughs> because this <laughs> sounds like it's not our, you know, voice. 
And they just repeated the same show notes at the end of which saying, note, these show notes may have been written by an AI bot. Can you put those in as a show notes today, regardless of what the show notes yes. actually are? Yes. Okay. <laughs> at least that works. And then people will be like, they didn't talk about chromatography at all. Nope, uh, we sure then, didn't. And then I said, okay, make up a totally fictional description of chromatography based on how it sounds and what the roots of the words might relate to. Because that's frequently where we go with... <laughs> that's one of our yeah. methodologies. Yeah. The roots, yeah. yeah. Chromatography is a cutting-edge scientific technique that utilizes the power of color to solve some of the most pressing problems facing society today. By harnessing the unique properties of different shades and hues, scientists are able to break down complex mixtures and understand them on a molecular level. <clears throat> the process itself is quite elaborate, involving the use of specialized equipment and intricate protocols to ensure the most accurate results. But the payoff is huge, as chromatography has already contributed to major advances in fields ranging from medicine to environmental science. So if you're looking for a way to make the world a brighter, more colorful place, then chromatography is definitely the field for you. Hmm. <laughs> right that's not a thing that we would come up with no <laughs> linking chroma to color is a thing that we could po probably do yeah, but i was already there yeah, yeah 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 okay so yeah. then i say write a fictional description of chromatography that describes that combines the concept of color and photography that seems totally unreasonable and fake and it and, said and it's no i don't think i will <laughs> <laughs> apparently so I got a little blurb when I logged into ChatGPT this last time, and it said that it's doing a better job of not saying no to questions that you ask it. Like they've <laughs> made improvements so that it will ac actually answer the questions that you give it. So no, it did not say no. I will Sequitur not. to nothing. We were watching old videos of the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and Katie, when she was very little, three maybe, had Olaf from um, mm -hmm. the Disney movie uh, Frozen. And uh, it was like a pull string and... There's a video of her pulling the string, and he says, do you want to build a snowman? She goes, nope, and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm she was doing it got... way before chat GPT is all I'm saying. I'm glad that you got that on video, because that is amazing. <laughs> it really is. It really is. All right, so it says, chromatography is an incredible, and sci uh, incredible scientific advancement that combines the power of color with the art of photography to unlock the secrets of the universe. By using specialized equipment and highly advanced protocols, scientists are able to capture photographs of individual molecules and analyze their unique color patterns. This allows them to identify unknown substances, track the, particle, the movements of particles, and even predict the weather. But that's not all. The applications of chromato chromatography are almost limitless, as it has been already been used to cure diseases, communicate with extraterrestrial beings, and tra even travel through time. So if you to, you're ready to oh. push the boundaries of what's possible and explore the world in a whole new way, then chromatography is the field for you. I want you to time travel with me 100 years into the future. And I want to think about this as a textbook ex example of how early AI uh, was, was uh, so confident in its incorrect understandings of the world that it impacted the way real humans used words <laughs> so there will be like a, a subtitle like in this uh, chapter early chromatography and it will point to this episode beginning <laughs> of season who knows what and somewhere in some archive there will be a copy of uh, maybe show notes or something um and it will be, probably be like something like an otherwise uh meaningless podcast or something of those and there will be like a footnote like <laughs> podcasts were it. dot 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 <laughs> generally an insignificant <laughs> yeah <showing. laughs> So yeah. I thought that that was uh, that was that was shockingly of... high amount of episodes. Yeah, large, <laughs> huge. What's what? What is the? What do I want there? Shockingly large quantity. Something. Large number. quantity. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's many. That's many. That's, that's also not a thing that we would uh, come up with uh, that description. So that's no. why I said I, I don't think the robot gets our vibe. Um, when do so, you think it will? When so like what? Like, like whenever that happens, I think that we are going to be without chips. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that the that the, you... the fact that it doesn't get our vibe is the fundamental reason why AIs can't fully replace humans. Because yeah. it doesn't, this is why self-driving cars won't work, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's something to that, right? Like, I think that there's a um, 
like like AI, like people are really excited about AI. And I don't know if like I'm not excited because I've already spent a lot of time thinking about it because of like science fiction novels as a younger person, or like is there like a thing where where like there's the like the the novelty of it is what has people excited, or is there actually something different these days? Because I don't feel like there's much different. I feel like it's I mean the it same is, old stuff, but it is it's it's the same stuff that it's been for like the past five or ten years. It's just that the models that they're using to the the things they're using to create the AI's brain is bigger. It's able to store more memory, so it's able to to make you know more connections and and infer. And it it is a little bit. I mean, obviously this is not poorly written it does make sense it doesn't yeah it's... but but the the difference is that it doesn't get our tone and that's and if you didn't care about tone uh and, and it gets a tone like it gets you know a fun internet podcast description tone but it doesn't get our fun internet podcast description tone you know yeah um so i think for a lot of applications you know it is good and better than than it has been in the past because if you if you think about like what what ai or robot created content was like five years ago it's like those russian spam emails that like have like one sentence that's coherent and like you know you know like just word salads of uh that you get that with with keywords and and links yeah that's true now we have like there's more environments where they've pulled back the curtain a little bit and like random people, like people like me, I'm a random person that knew what AI was, but isn't like playing with it actively or doing anything with it can just like mess around Mm -hmm. or like all the AI generated art, like that captures Mm -hmm. people's imaginations because we've told generations of people that they can't be artists. And now they're like, Oh my God, I can create things. And that like sparks something in the Oh, that's interesting too. Yeah, I mean the flip side of that is the artists that that are, you know, having essentially their styles stolen by robots, yeah, uh, to create AI generated art. But yes, that is yeah. Mm-hmm. But like the people that are playing with it aren't being like, oh, I'm ripping off an artist that has mm-hmm. worked hard to maintain this style. Right. They're like, right. I can, I am too. I'm a creator, and then yeah. just like, and that's why everybody was sharing all those photos and like. What's the, we, it was a topic of ours. What was the Japanese thing where you leave a piece of imperfection in and even highlight it? What was that called? Kintsugi? Season one. Yeah. Kintsugi. Yes. Do you, I mean, it seems like the Japanese were onto something there. Like there's onto that. onto a like, lot of things. <laughs> they're onto a lot they of are. Things. Yeah. They are. Well, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is there's that like, there is that beauty of being like, this is actually human made. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you want to actually know what chromatography is? Kind of, because I I feel like I kind and, of know what it is, but and, not. And do you be... have do you have let's I guess the first question is do you have guesses as to yes. what chromatography? Yes, I have a guess. Is? Okay, I feel like chromatography is uh, any any place where you can use um, uh, like a test that the outcome is different colors as a way to identify within like a scientific field what's happening at a chemical level. Well, yeah, because I was thinking like litmus paper as an example of chromatography. Yes. But I don't know if that's actually, but that's like like acid or base. I'm like, is that just at its like core, like (laughs) the most boring form? (laughs) Well, I I mean, would would like a COVID test also count for chromatography? Like it's a a line line or a purple line? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. This is... um... Because what other, let's see, like what other medical tests could be? <laughs> <laughs> well, any kind of urinalysis, you know? Yeah, I was like, there's got to be something. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV, but. <laughs> just play one on a podcast. Yeah, just play one on a podcast. That will be inconsequential in a hundred years. So I but don't in a know textbook. That... <laughs> I, I don't know that you're wrong, but what it what it actually is is I think the scientific process that makes that color changing happen. Because what it actually oh. refers to is 
and what it has in the parentheses is the separation of mixtures based on the chemical and physical properties of their components. So it's actually the the thing that makes that separation that makes those colors because then it, then mm. the Wikipedia article does have like a bunch of tests that have like the different colors and like whatever. So it's not the color change itself, but it is the process that makes those colors separate so that they're visible so that you can see like different chemical reactions between things. Right. Can I share a cultural experience I had last night? Sure. Okay. It's also chromatography. Non sequitur. The only thing I could think of was like color change was um in soda. I'll get to why that's an example <laughs> in a moment. Yeah, it was weird. Um Ty and Katie had a four H meeting that, that Rhonda was taking them to. So I had Charlotte. Charlotte is a friend of school who has been talking nonstop about frosties at Wendy's. Charlotte's never had a frosty, so I'm like how about we go to Wendy's for dinner and I'll get you a Frosty if you eat a good dinner? Because that's the age we're at. We have to bribe. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. So as we get to this Wendy's, which I haven't been to before because I don't frequent Wendy's. Uh, and I will not start after this experience. Um, <laughs> as we parked and we we were the only car in the parking lot. It was a little early, but it wasn't that early. As we walked in, there were uh, right outside the door, there were two gloves and, a, and an apron as though someone had just quit their job and walked out. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, and I went in anyway, and uh, I went to the register and uh, we ordered and it was fine. And then I went to pay and they were like, oh, our card reader doesn't work. So you need to stick your card in twice and then and then you can swipe it and the machine will actually process. I'm like, okay, Seems that's fine. Interesting. <laughs> uh, so uh, like stick your card in twice so that it fails. Correct. And then it failed swipe. quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and so then we got our food and we went to sit down and um, I was like, I just want like a Sprite, like I'm going to have a Sprite. Um, so I go to the machine and it's one of those Coca-Cola freestyle machines where there's like the touch screen, mm -hmm. except it's not a touch screen. It has like a QR code and you have to use your smartphone to scan. No. And I on have. your phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you can imagine how much lag there is between when you push the button for the soda to come out. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh, well, I got to let go so I don't overfill it on my hands. So I ended up with this cup that was oh, like no. an inch. Well, no, I, I stopped way too early. And I'm like, I'm not even going to risk it because I don't need that one. I don't want soda right. anyway. But, um, and so as we're sitting there eating, Charlotte eating her chicken nuggets, some lady uh, walks out from behind the counter and stops and lights up her cigarette to walk out the door to have her smoke break in the restaurant. Um, at some point, there was a lot of yelling coming from the kitchen. And I was like debating whether we needed to like bail like on our dinner and leave. Um. oh Charlotte's like can I get ketchup I'm like sure so I went up to the part where you pump the ketchup mm -hmm. and they have all these cups set up you know mm -hmm. so I get it and I go and I push the thing and the handle goes thump straight down it's not set up it's just there it's decorative oh, they have mm -hmm. the cups out there's no ketchup I'm like well that's I go to the counter and I'm like can I get ketchup they're like uh let me see if we have any sure that's <laughs> that kind of ramshackle oh I know. <laughs> I know and then um, so dinner finished I'm sure some other weird things happened uh, and I go to order uh, a Frosty because we've successfully mm -hmm. eaten dinner. And I order a Frosty. And she's like, we only have vanilla. I'm like, at this point, that's fine. I don't she's care. She's never had one. She won't know the difference. Right. <laughs> so we order a Frosty. And uh, I don't know. I went to do something, clean, finish cleaning at the table or get her jacket or something. I come back up. And the girl's like, uh, another girl's bringing it out. She's like, oh, it says vanilla. Is chocolate okay? I'm like, yep, it's fine. <laughs> It'll work. <laughs> just like, what is going on here? Like, I don't, I don't, it, it was, oh, it was so it Sounds like a very vigilant experience, like where you were like kind of on edge the whole time. I was just like, the, at some point it turned from a like, wow, this is bad to like, what's going to happen next? <laughs> like, I'm kind of here for this mayhem. what will happen next. Do I need yeah. to call someone? <laughs> I, I do feel a bit obligated to like go and leave like a review on their website, but I also want them to contact me like, oh, here's some coupon. Like, right. I'm like, use I'm not them. Back. Yeah. I just I'm need not, you to I'm know that back. like this is not representing your brand in any way you want to be associated with. Just trust me. Like, so Wendy's, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, because they're totally. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess we're they're burning gonna, that they're bridge. They're going to revoke of, their sponsorship. Of, yeah, we're going to burn that bridge right right now. Uh, first first episode of season five. Uh, the thing that I did want to talk about, though, now that we're within the last 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Spotify uh, alerted me yesterday to, or prompted me yesterday to create a time capsule. Mm. Um, 
and and like it's like okay we're gonna you're gonna make a playlist and you're not gonna see this playlist for a year and that's like okay and i guess like the idea it like gave you prompts like what song represents this i don't know emotion sort of thing like sort of like to give you like a sort of like a like this is where you were on the first day of 2023 and then when you get to 2024 look at how things have changed um a different person now. yeah totally different <laughs> do, totally do, different do you remember um, the guy in futurama when they first opened the time capsule who was like welcome to the yeah. <laughs> shut up carl <laughs> <laughs> sorry i just so uh, struck me as that was the well so it but it, it made me think about about the concept of time capsules mm -hmm. uh and and I, I guess the thing that I wanted to bring was what would you put in a time capsule if and for how long, I guess, would you want that time capsule to be missing and then return into your life to see what you were what you were mm. thinking about on on this day, the, you know, so the idea is a time capsule we would open ourselves, I guess, or maybe a time capsule that would just be opened by someone else. I don't know. OK. Mm. Open ended. Mm. It makes me think because I read that um, they did a time capsule at Dollywood and Dolly Parton put in an unreleased song and mm. it's to be opened in like 40 or 50 years or something. Basically, yeah. she said, after I'm gone, unless I'm amazing and I live to like 120 or something. <laughs> um, and then she said that she regretted it because she was like, it was a really good song and I kind of wanted to share it with people right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Um, a really cool idea, though. That's what, I... what Wu-Tang should have done with that album that they sold to what's his asshole. Um, going, I feel like I would put, it's hard because then do I put the actual thing in? Because I still want to keep one of the things. Mm. So like I was thinking, oh, a deck of tarot cards. But I'm like, but I still want my deck of tarot cards. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not done yet. <laughs> um, a deck but of you tarot also cards. don't want it to be, you also don't want it to be like, Oh, I don't care about this one. Like these are the tarot cards I don't use. So this is just representative of me at this Rep time yeah. in my life. Like, no, you want to put the ones that like actually have value. So I guess I, I don't know. I get maybe a copy, or, like a duplicate copy of one that means something to me. Mm -hmm. Um, probably some homemade candles. Um, what else? I don't know. So I because other things I think of like plants or things that are like representative mm. of things that I love. I'm like, well, I can't put a plant in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> can't put my cat in there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I do find myself thinking of lots of written like paper, like things on paper. Like I would put poetry and I would put a favorite recipe and I would put in like pictures like that. I guess yeah. I'm like making a time binder as opposed to a time capsule. <laughs> time, binder. time binder. Yeah. Don't um, open yeah, this. No, for that's a years. good idea though. I would put in some journals. Um, hmm. You know, I would probably put in, uh, not for any particular reason, but I, I feel like I would put in like a, um, like a grocery store receipt or something of that nature. Not well, that will to fill catalog. the whole time capsule up. It'll be so long. <laughs> yeah, I would say a CVS receipt. <laughs> um, no, that's a good. No, I mean, like not to catalog like prices of goods, but like what were the normal things that were purchased? You know, because mm. I feel like. I, I don't know. I think a hundred years seems like a reasonable time for a time capsule. Those, those, those like glimpses into like what normal life was like. Yeah. However long ago are really interesting. Like um, there was a, a newspaper that my grandparents kept that we have. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember why, but like, it might've been like when there was the earthquake in 1989 or something, I, it might've been something completely different, but you know, like, like just, just like the, the, the reason why the newspaper was saved is less interesting than the newspaper itself and the sorts of things that at this point, yeah, you know, like, and the same sort of thing with like, you know, when we were exploring the upstairs in our first house and finding all this random shit from like, you know, when the house was, was yeah. built in a hundred years ago, like stuck in, in the, in the eaves of the roof or, or like wherever, um like we found like these really old like wooden toy blocks we found like bits of paper that was from that were from like boxes or packaging i mean it was all like fascinating like glimpses into into the pa when we at, at our last house like digging up the garden and finding all of these bottles of different kinds of like that were like mm -hmm. you know 
much, you know, obviously like, you know, maybe they held liquor or maybe they held like medicine or something, but they're like all crafted in a way that is not how we mass produce, you know, glass bottles anymore. That yeah, sort of thing. Our hundred moonshine jugs we found here. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so that stuff is always really interesting. I don't know what I would put in my... I, I don't have an answer to my own question. Um, I'd probably put a VHS tape, a CD, <laughs> like some old media types, I think yeah. would be fun. I, yeah, well, that's what so, I was thinking. Like, I would I would want to put music that, like, matters to me, but in what form does music take, right? Like, music is, you know, like on, on a, a, a self-playing, self like, you know, MP3 player or something. Well, no, on the Dolly Parton front, she said that they put it in with like, because they did this several years ago. So they put it in on like, I think she said an MP3 player. Like they, they put in a Discman and the CD essentially. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> but then it's like our batteries still a thing. Right. Yeah. And and how would the batteries even continue to work after 100 years? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what what's what's the power technology to still be here in, in 100 years? And it's 110 AC. Whatever it is has to run off like, you know, 120 volt. Home electricity that's not going away in 100 years but batteries i i think that's a good question yeah. like rechargeable stuff's going to get really good and like who's going to buy alkaline batteries or where are you going to find them or mm -hmm. i feel like plastics and rubbers like you know things that are polluting would be really interesting to put in there like here's a pair of shoes that are you know like probably that bleed plastic into the oceans you could put you could put like a big mac or something in there just for posterity <laughs> Yuck. yeah i mean it would still be there yes that looks like i don't want to see that you've like seen you've years. seen those pictures right people like take like a mcdonald's cheeseburger and after 10 years it just looks exactly the same because it just there's uh <laughs> but i went to wendy's last night i still can't believe that the qr code because like i think i think it, it's so dangerous this assumption that everybody has smartphones yeah i had the same thought like what, what um, do you do? it's, you it's a machine. certain kind of elitism and just assumption that I'm just like, there are lots of people that do not have smartphones. Right. I, By choice I or just because of it. affordability? Like... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. <laughs>